is Bob Taub. I'm a pianist, a musician. I've always been a musician my whole life. At the moment, I'm a music director for the Arts Institute at the University of Plymouth. And as part of the Mayflower 400 commemorations, I thought it would be appropriate to create a music drama that is centered around certain key themes um, that we can all learn from. They were key themes in 1620, and um, they're certainly important today in 2020 and 2021. Um, I guess the focus of the main pro of the main theme is um, it, it's easy to say, but hard to imagine in some ways. Stewardship of land as opposed to dominion of land, and um, this conflict of stewardship versus dominion first manifested itself as soon as the pilgrims landed in the New World. Pilgrims had an idea, as did many other European settlers, of finding a good piece of land, claiming it, building upon it, um, and then repeating that process ad infinitum uh, as they ran out of land, you know, repeatedly. Um, by contrast, uh, the indigenous peoples had a concept of land which um, embraced living on the land, farming it, hunting on it, fishing for sure, even fighting potentially over particularly fertile pieces of land. But the concept of ownership of land, of dominion, was never on their spectrum. I've described Some Call It Home as a kind of multi-drama production. You described it as a kind of music drama. The, the blending of music and digital imagery, why have you chosen that approach for this particular um, production? And how does that sort of impact on the audience experience? So I think the first thing to consider is um, what I'm using as the thread throughout this entire drama. I mean, there's this philosophical, ethical, moral idea or dilemma um, that of the conflict of the two ideas of dominion versus stewardship. But um, that that's just the kernel. That's the starting point. And what I've done is to find um, quotations from historical figures. These are quotes that actually exist from one of the pilgrim leaders all the way through to, you know, um, Apollo 11 astronauts and Thomas Jefferson along the way and many others. These quotes sort of motivate um, the entire backbone of the drama. And so they have become the basis for the songs, the, the, the libretto, the songs which have been composed by two composers whom I commissioned to, to, to write the music. Um, in addition to the music, which of course has intrinsic drama in a musical sense that ho hopefully highlights the drama of the words, I thought it was very important to not just create sort of an operatic scenario with backdrops and sets, but rather to have um, images that are of the time and in, in fact video um, of, of a particular um, more, much more recent uh, dramatic event, modern day pilgrims as it were, um, people being smuggled across the Sahara Desert in a caravan of uh, Toyota Hilux pickup trucks. This video exists, it was shot by a smuggler, we're using it um, as part of uh, one of the scenes of, of, of this drama. So the, the interplay amongst music uh, itself, the, the drama inherent in the lyrics, um, the drama inherent in the narrative, which ties together the, in an interstitial way um, the, the, the lyrical uh, elements of the scenes, and then the um, multimedia concept of video and a visual, strong visual component, I believe all taken together offers a kind of organic synthesis of different art forms to create this piece. And so, sort of revisiting the the core cool thematic that you spoke about around um, dominion versus stewardship throughout hash history the issue of land ownership has existed um, and how so how does music allow you to explore this explosive issue and and more broadly help to provoke conversation and facilitate debate about many what would be considered quite challenging topics sometimes you know it's you've, you've raised a really interesting point about um, the relationship of um, our relationship, humans' relationship with land throughout history. And um, 
there has always there has been a concept of land ownership and land dominion and the idea that land is infinite and you can do whatever you want with it but i don't th i don't think that everyone always subscribed to that um certainly we know that the indigenous peoples in the americas did not um and there are other examples in in history i think and even prehistory which suggests that there was there was so much land um, that mankind, um, human beings, uh, had a different kind of relationship with the land from what we regard as kind of normal in the you know twentieth century or at least the first half of the twentieth century and maybe a few hundred years before that as well. Um, so you know if you think a little bit about the polytheism of Greek and Roman culture, it's a different kind of thing. Certainly, the Romans went out and created an empire. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they felt that they had dominion over the land in any kind of what we would consider an ecological sense today. Um, they built aqueducts, they built sewer systems, they were careful with certain things, they knew how to um, deal with society in many different ways. Um, so uh, the, I, the concept of humans' relationship with land is, um, critical to the, the survival of our planet as we move forward. I don't think um, most, I think most people won't argue with that. And uh, the music in this work serves to help underlying, uh, underline the drama inherent in the relationships with land and their multiple evolving relationships that this drama portrays, as well as to create um, drama, both calm and not so calm, uh, within certain scenes. What's interesting, obviously, around COVID-19, this pandemic that we're all living through um, as we speak, it's sort of called into question many of the established human behaviours and what is and isn't important anymore and how we should or shouldn't behave moving forward. How might this sort of influence a next chapter of Some Call It Home, which of course was was developed before COVID was even a thing um, and, and kind of that relationship with with land ownership how that how might that be reflected within a sort of next chapter of some call it home. The um, idea of a uh, cohesive relationship with our land one which um, in, with our planet really which one which embraces um, every person taking a little bit of responsibility so that we can have a collective idea of, of how we can all move forward together. Um, that, that is kind of the subliminal message, or maybe not so subliminal message of, of some call, call it home. Um, we're all in this, to, in our home together. Uh, we should all steward our home in a, um, in a reasonable way. So, you know, a, a pandemic, uh, is an opportunity to um, ask how can we avoid the next one and um, perhaps uh, a cohesive approach with honesty and with responsibility um, about uh, how to address potential pandemics before they become pandemics um, that kind of overall approach in which we each play a role and people involved play you know, make decisions um, on a grander scale can play even a larger role with responsible decisions. What role does music play or what role could music play in that kind of um, approach? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say that if you practice violin five hours a day, the earth is going to be cleaner. Um, well, if you practice viol five, violin five hours a day, at least you're not driving. But, um, you know, it, I think the, the notion of um, creativity, uh, and you know is 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 good. No one ever objects to creativity. Um, and if we can all be more creative, not not just with music, but in in each in our own way, in our own fields, and think creatively, and and take responsible. You know, when you're when you're out on stage playing a piano concert, you're you're responsible for yourself. There's there's there are no crutches. There's no one for you to lean on. And um, I like that, I relish that. And uh, I think that if we all have some of that in our lives, some of the excitement of being involved and, and the excitement of taking responsibility for your own actions and 
and thinking about a greater whole uh, in, in this specific case, you know, how we can each help our local environment, which of course will, will have ramifications in the greater environment. You know, that, that's a good thing. And there are many creative ways we can do that. Um, and many obvious ways as well, you know, don't litter. <laughs> um, one of the interesting byproducts of this, um, you know, lockdown, not only in the UK, but elsewhere is that uh, pollution has been greatly reduced. So maybe there's something we can learn from that. Mm -hmm.